so anyway, so he leaves India, comes back, um, has an illustrious career, you know, becomes an agricultural officer, yeah. goes back to Pakistan, gets a master's degree, goes to America, gets another degree, eventually ends up as the principal of Egerton College. Yes. What was his greatest achievement at Egerton? Well, that is a, an interesting and tough question because I do not know exactly what he would have considered his greatest achievement. But for me, uh, despite growing Egerton and creating all different faculties during his time there, I think the one that really stands out for me is how he introduced uh, women into agriculture. Uh, everyone knows that Egerton was the only uni uh, college that offered agriculture uh, in Kenya back then, and East Africa for that matter. And it's during his tenure there that he introduced the diploma course for women to become agriculturalists. And that was a time when agricultural extension was a big thing in Kenya. Uh, like it certainly should be right now. And you know women play an integral part in agriculture in this country, even in the rural area. So him introducing women into being agriculturalists to me stands out as his greatest achievement at Egerton. What about regrets? Did he have any regrets when he left Egerton? Yeah, I think he did have a regret, and I, he mentions it in the book. I think one regret was that he wasn't able to push Egerton into a degree offering college, even though he tried. He offered the government and the ministry, he offered the, uh, Egerton as a college to be set up into a university, but the ministry at that time did not see the need. Thank God, years later, long after he left Egerton, the campus ended up growing and offering a university degree. Okay. Yes. So he leaves Egerton, plunges into politics. Yes. All right. Uh, becomes minister. Uh, minister for Natural Resources and eventually Minister for Agriculture and Livestock Development. Yes. Um, in the epilogue of the book, you have noted that Dr. Saleh Kosge called um, William Odongo Mamo Daktari, the greatest minister of agriculture that Kenya has ever had. Why do you think so? Why do you think she said that? Well, I think Dr. Sally Kosge was talking from a personal level of what she observed, because at, the moment, at that point when she said those words, she was a minister for agriculture, and she went through the records at the ministry. And the records were very rich on the work that he had done as the minister for agriculture. You remember, uh, my father had an extensive background in agriculture. First, as the very first Kenyan to acquire a bachelor's degree in agriculture back in 1955. He ended up being the first Kenyan to acquire a master's degree in agriculture in 1959. Agricultural economics. Yes, it was agricultural economics, correct? Yes. And he also went further to acquire a degree in agricultural economics with a concentration on extension services. So with this background, he came and served Kenya in various capacities in different stations across the country. He served in Nyeri, he served in Embu, he served in Maseno, he served in South Nyanza, he served in the provincial headquarters in Kisumu, and he served also in the national headquarters in Nairobi, all as agriculturalists. Further, he went on later in the 70s to serve Mumia Sugar factory as an executive chairman. And during his tenure at Mumias, he actually oversaw the expansion of sugar production, tripling through his time there. Of course, after that, he went further to become the Minister of Agriculture. And when he was Minister of Agriculture and Lifestyle Development, he really, really pushed and propagated for artificial insemination for cattle. He encouraged cattle dipping, which was really, really big back then. He also encouraged farmers to grow things the Kaliech way, to stop relying on doing things in a small scale way, but to always think big. So during his tenure as Minister for Agriculture, 
Kenyan farmers uh, really, really got boosted because there was a lot of agricultural extension that he really, really pushed for during his tenure. Mm. Yeah. Yes, and even I recall reading in the book when he was the um, when he was the boss of the Agricultural Finance Corporation. Yes. Um, he he expanded credit to the hustlers. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He. How did he achieve that, by the way? Uh, well, I think he used his stature to push for implementation of some of these things where he was able to negotiate with the Minister for Finance at the time, uh, the late Honorable Mwai Kibaki, to offer credit to small-scale farmers. You know, he reduced the capacity, where, whereas in the past one needed to have bigger uh, size of land to get credit, but he reduced it uh, so that small-scale farmers could get credit as well through the AFC. Thank you.